right, how about three daily habits that could hurt your health and decrease your lifespan? So if you're a subscriber to my channel, I know you care about your health. That's why each week I do my very best to help you make your health a top priority. So today I'm sharing three surprising daily habits that could be hurting your health and decreasing your lifespan. Number one, first up, eating breakfast. Now, first of all, most traditional American breakfast foods are loaded with sugar and health-wrecking ingredients. Cereal, waffles, sugary granola, yogurt, instant oatmeal, and animal protein. But that's not the only reason breakfast is terrible for you. Breakfast was designed to break your overnight fast. And there's very strong evidence that breakfast is a very modern time of day to eat. Uh, it looks like breakfast was started in England at the Industrial Revolution in the late 1800s, when men went off to factories and worked all day. There were no breaks, there was no lunch break, and returned home late at night. Women would prepare men a breakfast before they went to work because they weren't going to be back until late at night and they needed to start something to start the day. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that concept. In fact, I talk about the Ramadan diet, which is this exact same thing where you eat breakfast before sunlight and don't eat again until after sunset. And as I've shown in my last two books, the Ramadan plan is actually very health promoting. On the other hand, this whole idea was hijacked by breakfast cereal companies in the early 1900s when cereals were invented and doctors were paid to actually tell people how healthy a bowl of cornflakes with a sliced banana was in terms of your health. In fact, a lot of the data for cereals making you lose weight was manipulated by these breakfast food companies. Breakfast is big business, and breakfast is not the most important meal of the day. On the other hand, I realize how hard it is for people to give up breakfast. And that's why if you still want to do a breakfast, then I've got tricks in unlocking the keto code to get you through that time period. Uh, my good friend, Dr. Walter Longo, has shown that a breakfast, basically of a nut bar called the fast bar, will not uh, stop you from being in ketosis from an overnight fast. And that's great news, and I talk about all the options, including a handful of nuts, to get you through the time to your next meal, which is, which is lunch. So break fast. The farther into the day that we can break fast, the healthier you're gonna be. Now, what happens when you reduce your eating window? I have tons of videos about fasting right here on my YouTube channel. Now I start, I like to recommend starting with a 12 hour fast. Believe it or not, most Americans are eating 16 hours a day from the second we get up, literally to the second we go to bed. But a 12 hour fast is pretty doggone easy to do. That's eating break fast at eight o'clock in the morning and finishing your last bite of food at eight o'clock at night. That's a 12 hour fast. Then each day we back off a hour per week. So for instance, if you're eating breakfast at eight o'clock in the morning this week, next week let's eat break fast at nine o'clock in the morning. So we'll just do that for a week. Come on, anybody can change one hour at a time and you'll be amazed how easy it is to progressively shorten your eating window. The more we shorten our eating window, 
the better you're going to do. Probably the best eating window is about six hours, and that's based on Dr. Matheson's work from the NIH. All right, worst habit number two, watching TV or scrolling through social media before bed. Now, I have said in my first book that Thomas Edison may be the cause of most modern diseases by inventing the light bulb. Light bulbs completely throw off our circadian rhythm. This artificial light mimics sunlight. It disrupts our melatonin production, and it signals your brain that it's actually time to be awake and alert. It also stimulates receptors in our brain that actually make us hungry. Because remember, summertime was a time when food was most available. And so winter was a time of less food. So sunlight and exposure to light, prolonged light, makes us hungry because that was when summer was and that's when the food was. This is ancient programming that our poor modern lifestyle never anticipated that we would have 365 days of endless summer. Add into that that we now have 365 days of endless fruits of summer, and you've got a double whammy for weight gain and misery. TVs and phones have intense concentrations of blue light. And if you've been watching me and reading my books, you know that blue light keeps us up and reduces our sleep quality. And more and more and more, we're recognizing that the quality of our sleep has tremendous impacts, not only on our short-term health, but our long-term brain health. On the other hand, Yellow, red, and orange lights would only have been present in the winter from fires. And those actually stimulate us not to eat and to go to sleep. So change over to red, orange, and yellow lights, or get yourself a pair of blue blocking glasses. Raw Optics and Blue Blocks are two great brands. For best results, wear them whenever you're in front of your phone, your TV, or your computer screen. Download an app that filters blue or green wavelengths on your devices. One of the best is iristech.co. Now, the other trick is to get lots of natural sunlight during the day. In fact, early in the morning, when the change is from the orange and red, to more intense bright light. This actually sets you up for a perfect circadian rhythm. And I can't recommend how strongly I urge you to get out in the early morning and get exposure to that natural light. And that's one of the great things having dogs. Dogs will get you out to get that exposure at exactly the right time establish that circadian rhythm and get you back in flow and in sync with daylight. All right, number three, eating a high animal protein diet. Now, folks, I am not against eating animal protein. I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska, and Milwaukee, Wisconsin, two epicenters for eating animal protein. I eat animal protein. I have nothing against animal protein. But the problem is, number one, there is no long-lived society ever discovered that bases their diet on lots of animal protein. On the other hand, all of the currently known blue zones, those areas with prolonged longevity that Dan Butner described in his book, The Blue Zones, all of these, including Loma Linda University, where I was a professor for much of my career, all the blue zones, the common factor in all of the blue zones, they all eat very different foods, by the way, the common factor is that animal protein is a minor part of all of these cultures' diets. 
I wish that wasn't true in many ways, and yet it is. So what, what's so bad about animal protein? Well, I've mentioned this many times, but I think it's worth repeating. First of all, beef, lamb, and pork carry a sugar molecule called NU5GC. We, on the other hand, and fish and chicken have a sugar molecule called NU5AC. They're very similar, but we can make an antibody against the lining of our blood vessels when we eat NU5GC containing foods, beef, lamb, and pork. I don't particularly want to do that. Number two, NU5GC can be used by cancer cells to hide from our immune system. And since we don't make NU5GC ourselves, cancer cells have to acquire NU5GC from beef, lamb, and pork. Another reason why not a good idea. Finally, animal protein has amino acids that increase insulin-like growth factor one and increase mTOR, two things that definitely age us. So why would we necessarily want to turn on factors that we know age us? I've had numerous examples, and there are studies done at Washington University in St. Louis asking patients to switch over to a six-week vegan diet and watch their insulin-like growth factors. And in every case, the insulin-like growth factors plummet. Now, you let me talk about other ways of reducing insulin-like growth factor, but lessening animal proteins is a powerful way to do that. And there are plenty of plant protein sources that don't do this. Hemp protein, spirulina protein, protein from nuts like pistachios and walnuts, and just eating plants. All plants have significant amounts of protein. Just ask a gorilla or a horse where they're getting their protein macros from, and it's not from cheeseburgers. It's from eating leaves and grass. Plenty of protein in plants. Make sure to check out the next one here. All of us are just storing fat for the winter that never comes. So that's why I tell you, give fruit the boot.